Well, are you up here in the attic again? It's been too long since I saw you here in the mask fan attic. Uh, Dr. Lady in your face once again with all the coolest monster masks from years gone by, from, from past history, and uh, well, none from the future, actually. They're, they're pretty much just limited to being from the past. But anyway, when is a movie mask not a movie mask? And when is a uh, Mr. Hyde mask not a Mr. Hyde mask? I don't know. But uh, here's a clue. It could have something to do with this mask right here. This, of course, being a mask called, don't get ahead of me now, Mr. Hyde. That's right, Mr. Hyde. Um, maybe you know his sister, Formaldehyde. Uh, okay, we'll, 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 we'll fix that in post. We'll cut that out. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to win any ad-libbing uh, awards for tonight's installment, am I? Anyway, Mr. Hyde here, in production for many, many years now, for... Um, for like 20 years, 20 year, more than 20 years come to think of it, Mr. Hyde here has been in production. Now that might lead you to think that, oh, it's been in production for 20 years? Oh, well then I'm sure they're, they're everywhere and there's one in every household in America and they're probably as common as uh, toothpicks or, or pictures of people's food on Facebook. This comes from Death Studios where uh, Mr. Death, aka Jeff Death, uh, does an awful lot of the production and finishing work on the masks himself. He or a small number of employees who have come and gone over the years uh, do all the work. So uh, even though uh, Death Studios has been making masks since approximately the Stone Age, uh, and even though you know they come out with new ones all the time and some of them are popular and stay in production for years and years, like this guy, uh, that doesn't mean there are gazillions of masks because a lot of them are only made as they are ordered. So this isn't something you would be likely to find at your local Spirit Halloween or something like that. No, where they have things that are mass produced over in Trashkanistan and, uh, you know, much, much cheaper and uh, much more, well, not even much cheaper come to think of it. I'm going to correct myself. I'm going to back up a little bit there. A little cheaper because Death Studios masks are so reasonably priced for what you get for something handmade. Uh, they, they cost almost the same as what some of the, uh, the Chinese imports cost. So you can't, you can't go wrong. I believe this guy sells for in the neighborhood of 75 bucks. And it's very nice quality. It's nice casting with um, hand applied hair. And it's a good quality hair. It's not that cheesy. Uh, plastic looking uh, kinky plastic stuff like some of the mass-produced masks have and look at that expression the great thing about this guy the thing that makes him really cool and collectible to my eye is his eye and his eyes and his mouth because if you can uh, if you can tell there this is a creepy mask he's very intense he's very sincerely insane looking now um, even though he's called Mr. Hyde, uh, he's not really a Mr. Hyde mask, technically. He's not really uh, a mask that started out to be a uh, fresh interpretation of the Mr. Hyde character. Mr. Hyde was just sort of a default name for him. And default in this case is mine because it was I who spoke to Jeff Death many, many years ago when this thing was new and he didn't have a name for it yet and uh, I said it's cool, but it, it kind of looks like it could be a Mr. Hyde character. Maybe it could be called. So that's what he called it. Yeah. So why, some of you may be asking, why does that mask look familiar? Um, you know, why does it look familiar? Why do I feel like I've seen it in a movie or something? Well, you might have, but you haven't seen it in a Jekyll and Hyde movie because the sculpture done by the obscenely talented uh, John Smith back in the day, and yes, his name really is John Smith. There really is a wonderful sculptor named John Smith. That's not like a, you know, a, a fake name. That's not like a, um, you know, an alias that he uses. He is John, John Smith. John Smith sculpted this based on Eddie Quist, the werewolf from the original 1980, or was it 81? I'm gonna say 80, 80 or 81. From the original, The Howling from either 80 or 81, whenever that came out, starring uh, Dee Wallace. Remember that film? Well, uh, the werewolf, the main werewolf in it, there were of course several, was Eddie Quist. And this is him mid-transformation, when he's starting to get the big teeth and the bugged out eyes, and he's not all the way into uh, werewolf mode yet, but he's sort of 
sort of starting and his face is starting to get all creepy. So that was the inspiration for the sculpture. So if it looks like something you've seen before, chances are you're thinking of the uh, transformation scene in the original, The Howling, when he starts to change and looks a bit like this, you see? Uh, still available as of this broadcast, maybe by the time you're watching it, I don't know how available it will be, but uh, it's a wonderful thing, it's a super creepy mask and not all that common despite having been in production for many years because again it's coming from a small uh, business rather than a vast factory somewhere. So, uh, which is, is uh, kind of a shame if you're, if you're just looking to build up your collection and find all these things and you just want quantity, but if you want quality it's good that it came from a small, uh, small business because uh, there's better quality control generally with uh, private artists and small independently owned studios than there is with, uh, you know, big assembly line type uh, factories and plants. So uh, whether you want to use him as a Mr. Hyde or a partially transformed werewolf or just a deranged lunatic with fangs or uh, whatever you want to use him for, I highly recommend the Mr. Hyde who looks a lot like Eddie Quist from uh, Death Studios mask lineup. And with that, I'm going to go and uh, straighten up the attic. See you back here in 500 years.